guys, it's Gary. Um, sorry about the sunglasses, but uh, I have to film the sun directly in my eyes, and I'm trying to protect them. But anyway, I'm in my uh, vegetable garden right now, and I'm cleaning up some strawberries that I purchased last year. Uh, they are called Archer, and they are a new release from Cornell University. And uh, it's a large strawberry. They claim it can be as large as a small peach. And even though large strawberries aren't my highest priority, um, if you're selling strawberries, people like really large strawberries. But the drawback to those varieties is the fact that they tend to be watery and less flavorful. Now, I was in California recently, and I tried some strawberries during the peak of their season. And I was almost depressed because they were so sweet. And we just don't experience anything like that here in Michigan. So, and, and for those of you that said, oh, yes, we can, go out there during the prime season and try some of their sweetest varieties and uh, determine that for yourself. But anyway, so that's what attracted me to this particular cultivar is the fact that it's a, a very sweet berry. It's very aromatic, so it has a really nice fragrance of strawberries. And uh, they say it just bursts with flavor, and it's a large berry. So I had to try some. Now, uh, I planted these in 2017, the, the year that you could first get them. And um, so this will be my first season receiving them. Now, I'm cleaning them up because at the end of the season, you have a lot of dead leaves. And if you had any diseases on those plants, some of them were overwintered on the leaves themselves. And another good thing about this particular cultivar, it's supposed to be very tolerant to both leaf and root diseases. Now, tolerant means that it may still get an infection of something, but it doesn't significantly cause problems for production uh, on the plants. Uh, resistant tends to mean it, it's less likely to actually be infected, but um, this plant, I'm happy with the fact that it's uh, tolerant. So we'll see how that turns out this year. Now, um, you'll notice that I did some tilling in my garden. And uh, the reason I did the tilling is I wanted to turn under all the material that we did not get out last fall. And by increasing the material being turned under the, the soil surface, it will break down faster through decomposition with the bacteria and things. And also, any strawberry material still on the surface is blown out into the soil and be gone. Now, what I will do is I'll take these dead uh, leaves off of the plants, and I will, um, I have three options to get rid of them. One, I can bury them. Uh, another one, I can compost them. And the third, which I tend to do in my garden when I'm raking up a lot of material, is I'll burn it and then I'll just till all, till all that material under. And the reason we do that is because this lowers what we call the inoculum, or the amount of spores that will be near the plants that potentially can infect them. Now, Michigan is a great place for diseases to get started. For instance, uh, I was out in uh, Colorado a number of years ago, and it was September. And normally on our tomatoes, they're really wiped out in terms of leaf diseases. They're pretty much defoliated unless you've been uh, continuing with fungicides to prevent that. And I noticed that in Colorado, there was hardly any infection at all. They were pretty much clean. And the difference between the two states is Colorado's much drier than we are. And because the leaves stay dry longer, they had less infection. Whereas here in Michigan, uh, they'd be pretty much wiped out by the end of the season. So it's a good idea to have very clean beds by removing all this material. So what I am doing is first I cut off all the dead leaves and leave just the, pretty much the healthy leaves that are starting to emerge. And uh, then the second thing I will then do is come through with my shop vac and vac up the small pieces that I could not get and then I will dispose of all that material. So this will prepare my strawberries for growing. Now I will not fertilize them at this point because if you fertilize strawberries in the spring, especially with high amounts of nitrogen, you'll end up with softer berries, and that's not something that we prefer to have. Uh, my fertilizer was put on last year, so they should be fine in terms of that. So we'll see how this turns out. Uh, I will give you some more updates, and there are a lot of things that I have to do before I can get my strawberries, and then I will do some taste testing to see how they turned out. Well, I hope this video was helpful for you so that you can plan and decrease your chances of diseases on not only your strawberries, but also other vegetables. And we'll talk about some more of these topics later. This is Gary, and I will speak to you again.